Hey people, it's been forever since I have tried to do one of these on-camera things. I've been on the road, been very busy. Um, I'm using my X-T4 for the first time and for the life of me, I could not get it under manual control. And I guarantee it was 100% my fault. The mic is on the table because I didn't feel like wearing it for some reason, hopefully this will work. And the autofocus I've noticed, sometimes it works with my glasses on and sometimes it doesn't, but I'm gonna wear them because it's bright and they look cool and that's the most important thing. Someone asked me recently about this series and said, what kind of books are you actually featuring? And I had a hard time answering because the idea is to feature a lot of different kinds of things. A friend of mine did a children's book recently that I think is fantastic. I've done some traditionally published photo books and I'm gonna do some blur books, et cetera, whatever strikes my fancy. Today's book in particular is very, very important and it was important in my career. And the book and the photographer frankly freaked me out a little bit in a good way. I actually know the photographer not well, have not spent a lot of time with him, but uh, was able to meet him a couple years ago. But this book requires a couple of backstories. First takes us back to 1990, University of Texas in Austin. I was studying to be a photojournalist, did not have a lot of money, uh, neither did any of my any of the people I was going to school with. I was not a particularly good photographer at the time, and I certainly was not a good student at the time. And so I had some time on my hands and um, I lived about a five minute walk from a place called Half Price Books. And I would go over to the Half Price Bookstore and I would look in the photo section and I would cull for like, you know, hidden gems. So the photo program at UT is what I would call at the time anyway, I would call that program relatively safe, right? Journalism and photojournalism came with a ton of rules. Couldn't do this, can't do this, have to do this. This has been done this way for 65 years and so everybody's gonna continue to do it this way. I'm not knocking the school or the program, that's just sort of what the culture was like at the time. So the work that I had been exposed to in photo history, art history, et cetera, was kind of like in our lane, if you will. There was nobody like veering out at 80 miles an hour with the top down and, and like blindfolded. No one was doing that. So I go over to Half Price Books and on this one particular day, I see two books that kind of stop me in my tracks. The first is a book called Mexico by Abbas. And Abbas is a Magnum photographer. Uh, he's probably more well known for a book called Allah Akbar, which is about Islam. But I saw this book on Mexico and I was at the time just starting to begin making trips in and out of Mexico. And, and the book from Abbas looked like, and I'll, I'll actually do a feature on this book at some point. I have two copies of it now. It looked like a non-commercial personal book about his sort of random voyages through Mexico. And, and I guess personal is the word that jumped out at me. I loved it. And I looked at this book and I put it back on the shelf. And then I looked over and there's this other book, this oversized flexi cover book. And I very innocently look at the title, Telex Iran by a photographer named Gilles Perez. And I was like, never heard of him. And uh, also, I don't know anything about Iran. I probably couldn't find it on a map. So I open up this book and within about 30 seconds, I was like, what am I looking at? Wait a second, what is this? I was looking at a level of visual sophistication with 35 millimeter black and white that I had just simply not seen before. I was looking at pictures that were framed and composed unlike anything I had seen. And it freaked me out. I literally thought, what am I looking at? And why have I not seen this person, heard of this person? Why are they not showing me this in school? And here's the secondary part of that, is as I began to look at these images and looking at the visual complexity and the layering in these images, you realize after 20 or 30 pages of this book that this is a consistent methodology by someone, the photographer, and I was like, wow, this is not a one-off accidental layered image. This is, a, this is a style of seeing the world, a way of seeing the world that is unique, at least. And, and there are other people who are working in similar genres that are good layering, but I was like, man, this is totally new to me. Secondarily, the book is called Telex Iran because at the time the Telex was a, communi a, a, a common communication methodology for people who were working in the field. And the book includes Telexes between Gilles Perez and the Magnum office. And they're very simple, they're very cryptic, they're very short, but they're incredibly revealing. And what it, what it proved to me was, and this sounds kind of weird because this all went down in about three minutes, is it proved to me that he was a human being because the telexes are so revealing in terms of, you know, I'm out of film, I'm out of money, I wanna leave, I wanna do this and wanna do that. That there, was, there were insecurities 
and the realities, the bumpers of life that we all bounce off of, no matter who we are, where we are, and, and the projects that we're working on. And I, I just, I, I couldn't handle it. I literally put it back on the shelf like an idiot, and I bought the Abbas book. And I don't feel bad about buying the Abbas book because I still look at it all the time. I still love the book, and I think he's a remarkable photographer as well. But I kicked myself for not buying the Telex Iran book, and it haunted me, and it haunted me for years, like. 20 years, I could have bought it. I could have bought it when it was still in print. And I didn't, and I think it was because it freaked me out on that day in Half Price Books. And remember, this was a time in my life where if I could buy a 12 pack of Milwaukee's Best or a photo book, I was probably gonna buy the 12 pack of Milwaukee's Best, which is a fine beer. And so I was like, God. And so I kept telling friends over the years, I made a mistake, I made a mistake. I didn't buy Telex Iran, I didn't buy it, I should have bought it. And about two years ago, a friend of mine calls me and says, hey, uh, we're having a little party at our house. Are you guys coming? And I said, sure, it's a party. I'll come. And as I went up to their party, he goes, uh, Milner, where's your truck? And I go, I don't know. It's parked over there somewhere. He goes, back it up over here. So I back up my truck and he starts loading boxes, boxes of photo books into the back of my car. And I'm like, did you steal these? because my friends have been known to lift a thing or two from time to time. Did you steal these? No. This is my book collection. I'm moving. I can't have it anymore. I'm giving it to you. And inside that book collection was Telex Iran, as well as other Gilles Perez books like this, which I will get to at a later date. Don't get greedy on these films. I'm going to do one book at a time. So let me just break this down. Jill Perez is not your average photographer. And for those of you who out, out there who learned photography in the last 10 years, or you learned photography online and you've not had much of an association with the traditional or classic industry of photography, then I'm gonna do you a little, a little solid here today by introducing you to who this person is because Gil Perez is not common. I don't know anyone else out there quite like him and his work is a testament to why he is different and what he's been able to accomplish. But just in a nutshell, just try to let this sink in for a minute. Started in around 72, uh, his books include Haynes, A Village Destroyed, The Graves, Srebrenica, and Vukovar, which is from the Balkans. The Silence, uh, Rwanda, which is a book about Rwanda, Farewell to Bosnia, and Telex Iran. Let's see what else. Um, his work has been exhibited and collected by the Museum of Modern Art. That's a pretty good place to get your work into. Uh, the Whitney Museum, another. PS1, uh, all in New York, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Corcoran Gallery of Art in DC, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, the Getty Museum in LA, the Walker Center, the Minneapolis Institute of Arts, the V&A in London, the Musée d'Art in uh, Modern Picasso Museum, the Pompidou in Paris, what else? Sprengel Museum in Hanover, basically everywhere, right? Take any one of those and you're like, yep, yeah, <laughs> I'm successful. So anyway, he's in all these places. His fellowships include the Guggenheim National Endowment for the Arts Grant, Pollock Krasner and New York State Council of Arts Fellowships, the W. Gene Smith Grant for Humanistic Photography, and the ICP Infinity Award. His portfolios have appeared in the New York Times, the Sunday Times, uh, Do Magazine, Life, Stern, Geo, Perry Match, Parquet, Aperture, The New Yorker, etc. But this last part is very important. Jules Perez is a professor of human rights and photography at Bard College. If you don't know about the legacy of photography at Bard College, whether it's uh, you know the Jules Perez of the world, Bard is another place for you to have to to investigate. Uh, he's also a senior research fellow at the Human Rights Center, UC Berkeley, and he joined Magnum Photos in 1971 and served three times as vice president and twice as president of the cooperative. What I'm saying is, basically, he's a total badass. Like, if you're going to learn about somebody in photography and co-opt some ideology, be, ideology about what is possible as a photographer, this is a good person to start with. Now, the second backstory before I get to the book, and I know I'm rambling here, but I don't care. It's my side. I can do whatever I want. Somehow, back in the early 2000s, I honestly do not remember how this happened. I fictionalize it in my head of how it happened because I romanticize it because it's more fun. So it goes like this. I'm in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm going to meet Gilles Perez. I don't know how that happened. I don't know if it was my boss, the founder at Blurb that made that connection, or did I reach out and make that connection? I don't remember. I do remember 
writing letters with Jill Perez at one point in my life, but I don't even remember how that came to be. What's happening with my brain is a mystery. So anyway, I'm sitting at a cafe at this little point where two roads come together in Brooklyn, and I have an M4 Leica on the table in front of me in my journal and probably some dorky backpack. And Jill Perez walks by. And he looks down and he goes, nice camera. Now, this wasn't a coincidence because I was there to meet him, but again, I don't remember why or how. So anyway, long story short, I get to spend uh, basically an afternoon with Jill Perez at his studio in Brooklyn. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe what that was like. Now, by this time in my life, I had been a photographer since 1992. I'd done magazine assignments, I'd done commercial assignments, I'd done fashion assignments, I'd done all kinds of terrible work over the years. I'd also worked for Kodak for four years and I had been in photo studios, the best photography photo studios on the West Coast I had been in for, for years. And I'd also worked for Blurb for, wow, I don't know how long. I'd been at Blurb for a while. So it wasn't like I wasn't being exposed to really good work. But I have to say that meeting Gilles and seeing his operation was unique. It was different. It showed me that he was not just a photographer. He was so, and is, so much more. There's like the world of Gilles Perez, and then there's the photography of Gilles Perez. And to me, it was such a, a eye-opening scenario that, again, it kind of freaked me out. So the book in 1990 freaked me out. That was the first thing. Then the studio visit freaked me out. And luckily, in some weird way, I've not had any communication with him since then. So maybe that's a good thing in some horrible, twisted way. Let's talk about the book. I'm gonna move my mic a little bit. The book is a flexi cover. Again, I'm gonna do some top down here, but there are people that deserve um, some respect here before we get started. Anytime you're talking about a book, and I've said this every single time, this is not just Gilles Perez. This is a team of highly talented, highly skilled, highly focused people that are bringing something like this into the world. Aperture Foundation is responsible uh, for this book amongst a lot of other people. Uh, it's, the book is titled Telex Iran, Jill Perez in the Name of Revolution, with an essay by Golam Hossein Saidi, uh, which is in the back. Let me give some, some credits here. Copyright 1983, Jill Perez and Contra Jour. Text is copyright, uh, Golam Hassam Saidi. Uh, let's see here. Paris, English Language Edition, 1983, Aperture, is the uh, published in the United States by Aperture, a division of Silver Mountain Foundation. Distributed in the United States by Viking Penguin. I'm looking here for, let's see here, who did the uh, did the design? Library of Congress, catalog number, a grant. Okay, here we go. There's a lot of dedications in the beginning here, which is cool. That's Jill tipping his hat at the people who've helped him along. Um, and people like Agnes Sire, Phillips Jones Griffiths, who's another Magnum photographer that I happen to have a half day walking the streets of San Diego experience with, but that's a whole nother story that I can't talk about today. Dominique Frittard, Marvin Israel and Fred Richton, et cetera, to Wendy Byrne for continuing the process, to Claude Nouri, his ideas and energy, Michael Hoffman, Carol Kismarich. Um, designed by Gilles Perez, Tarkas, and Claude Nouri with Nan Richardson. And the introduction in the book is by Nan Richardson. So again, I wanna make sure that all of those people get credited because they are important. So let's take a top-down look at this. And again, I'm only gonna show you a teeny bit because you gotta get your hands on this somehow. Go to the library, find an, find an old copy, badger a friend like I did mercilessly until he caves and provides you his own copy. Let's do the top-down. All right, people, let's have a little look at the top-down view. Now, this is obviously my additions for the few pages that I'm gonna show you. I am only showing you a few pages. This is a book that you need to, like I said, get your hands on it. First thing you're gonna notice is the atypical crop and layering on this cover photograph, right? The cover design is very interesting to me. The nice little band of color here. This is what I would call flexi cover. It's not a hard cover. It's not quite a soft cover. It's a little beefier than that. Now. As you are noticing, the condition of my book is not remotely healthy. This is not supposed to do that. This is not supposed to come apart like that. 
you can actually see where it is supposed to be glued together. So I didn't do this to this book. My friend did, he's rotten. My friend is evil and probably should go to jail for this, but I'll let the courts decide. So I have to be very careful with this book because it is falling apart. And again, I'm only gonna show you a couple of things. One, I found this very interesting, especially in the culture that we're finding today, the modern culture of journalism. As an Iranian, I want you correspondents and journalists plus film takers tell the truth to the world. Gil Perez says something very interesting in the front of this book, which is, you know, I don't have all the answers. This is not, you know, this is just one person's look at this place at that time. That's a very refreshing thing to hear from a photographer, which is really nice. So let me just move forward here. A background of events. Now, if you're, in a, I was born in the US. Um, I did not hear the word Iran until I found this book. That's basically, which is really remarkable if you think about it because of what was happening in the world at that time in geopolitics and what was happening in Iran. I should have known about it, but I didn't. And so having, for, for someone like me, a background of events is, uh, is critical. Okay, so I'm gonna move forward here a little bit, make sure I don't skip anything. Like I said, I'm not revealing too much. I only need to show you one photograph. I really do. That's all I have to show you in terms of, this is the, this is the image that I happened to open this book to at, in 1990 in UT Austin, and I could not comprehend what I was looking at because I first thought that this was two photographs. And then I realized this is not two photographs. You have this unbelievable section here. You have the looks on these faces here and here and here and here, all women. You have this unbelievable, this person must be, he's right on top of this person. You have this great connection, this eye connection here. You have the feet at the top of the stairs. You've got another layer of this person in black here in the back that's barely visible, but then the, the light on her face. And you've got a guy with a, a weapon here in the center of the frame with these amazing, these dynamic element lines coming up. This is what Gilles Perez does on a consistent basis. Making a single image like this is a, in my opinion, is a kind of a remarkable feat. And for, to see a book full of these and a career full of these is kind of astounding. Luckily, I don't have a thin skin. I think you could easily see this and go, I'm never gonna be this good, I can't do this work. Or you could go do like me and go out and do subpar work for the rest of your life but, and use it as an uh, inspiration. This I brought up, I'm showing you here because these are what the telexes look like. And this one I found particularly interesting. It says, Dear Gilles, films well received and all technically good, stop. Just leaving for lab with Guy, stop. Congratulations, stop. Do you have only US Kodachrome as it takes three days longer in Paris to process than French Kodachrome due to non-inclusive processing price? Best Jimmy. I love that. I worked for Kodak for four years. I heard stories of journalists going to strangers and saying, will you carry my film back on a plane? Think about doing that today, it's, it's absurd. And people would, they would take film from a stranger and when someone would meet them at the airport in New York and get this film or Paris in this particular case and get film, that's, a, that's a, just a remarkable part of photo history in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna, almost done here. Not gonna show you any of this because you're gonna go out on your own and you're gonna find it. So I just wanted to put this out, which is the essay. And I don't know what the exact dimensions are of this book, but as you can see by, my, the, by the size of my hands or the in relationship to my hands, this is a large book. And I love this big two column, simple type treatment. Um, I think on a smaller page, it would be difficult in some ways to pull this off. This to me is an approachable, it's, it's, a, it's a sizable body of copy, but it's approachable because of the scale of the book. And I think that the design of this book does not get in the way of the content. And I think a lot of times today, uh, some of the photo books I see, a lot of them are amazing, awesome tools. Um, and then other times, sometimes the design gets out in front of the actual content. And with this book, that is not the case. So I think this is incredibly well done. Hopefully this will not completely disintegrate. I'm, I'm keeping this in a, uh, in a glass case with a 24 hour armed guard. So uh, anyway, that in a nutshell is Telex Iran by Gilles Perez. This was again, one of the most important books in my life as a photographer. And I wanna 
thank my friend Paul for putting this in my hands, even though he's rotten for treating it the way he did. So I will see you guys next time. Was it worth it? Was it worth the rambling, mindless mess that I am to get through for you to experience uh, Telex Iran by Gilles Perez? I hope it was. Again, these books, it sounds corny or maybe sounds melodramatic to say that a book like this would change my life, but it, it did. And it's not the only book to change my life. Gilles is not the only photographer to make me see the world in a different way. Plenty of others have, have influenced me in a similar fashion, uh, but I like people who are unique, and I like people who are more than just someone who presses the button. And I think he is a great representation of that. He is still out making world-class work and is someone to follow and investigate uh, as much as you possibly can. So I appreciate you tuning in. Who knows what I'll do next? I've got literally 350 books sitting here waiting to be, to be focused and featured on. I'll talk to you next time.